The result of this particular study is so amazing in regard to how certain elements of the microbiome can actually affect bone volume or bone density. It's probably best to start with the outcome. Just so you can understand the gravity of the impact of this particular study itself. All right, what you're looking at right there is the vertebral trabecular uh, bone volume increase percentage, in this case, the spine. All right, look at the time. All right, that's a four week period of time. The study participants were animals, and they were 10 week old female mice, and the study ran four weeks. And look at the increase on those spinal numbers. There and there. Now you may see DREG, that means uh, depleted of regulatory T cells, or you may see WT, wild type mice. In any case, look at that skyrocket with nothing more than the introduction of either lactobacillus rhamnosus, GG, or butyrate. Now there's a couple of caveats in regard to butyrate, how it may work a little bit better than the lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus in regard to a germ-free environment, but still, look at that chart. I'm going to keep that chart up as I read the response of the research scientist itself. Quote, we were surprised by the potency of the gut microbiome in regulating bone and the complexity of the mechanism of action of probiotics. In general, there is a lot of interest in the concept that the gut bacteria regulate the function of distant organs. How this happens is largely unknown. According to the researchers, of course, we describe a detailed mechanism by which changes in the composition of the gut microbiome induced by probiotics affect a distant system like the skeleton. Before I proceed, this, uh, the study is published in full, so we're looking at more than just an abstract. DUI links will be there for you to uh, research further on your own. Now, let's go right into the research itself. Probiotics increase bone volume in healthy mice. A widely used probiotic stimulates bone formation in young female mice, according to a study published November 13th in the journal Immunity. In response to treatment with lactobacillus rhamnosus, GG, other intestinal microbes produce metabolite called butyrate, which in turn activated bone enhancing immune cells, including regulatory T cells. There is so much more to the study than just the bone density itself, but we're gonna focus on the outcome in regard to bone density. The significance of the study is that probiotics are, at least in mice, an effective means to increase bone density, according to the researcher. Clinical trials are in progress to validate the efficacy of probiotics in humans. All right, with this in mind, uh, a lot of questions may be uh, in regard to dosage and so on and so forth. So we're going to uh, take a side trip to the full study real fast. Mice were treated with LGG, uh, lactobacillus rhamnosus, uh, 1 to the 10th not to the 9th power, 1 billion total bacteria, 5 days a week by oral gavage for 4 weeks starting at 10 weeks of age. Eventually raised mice were treated, then it goes on to the butyrate, as you can see, 36 uh, milligrams of butyrate per mouse per day. And it's kind of cute. Uh, how the animals did not like the taste of butyrate itself, and so how they gradually increased the amount until the mice became acclimated to the flavor, which I think is really cute. Notably, this is another caveat you have to keep in mind in regard to the LGG. Notably, LGG supplementation did not increase bone mass in mice raised in a germ-free environment. Hence, the prior the title in regard to healthy mice, suggesting that this probiotic indirectly exerts its effect through the metabolic activity of other microbes that normally inhabit the intestines. However, the butyrate, in this case, did work in that germ-free environment where the lactobacillus rhamnosus GG did not. Henceforth, they draw the conclusion that the LGG has to work with other uh, microbes where the butyrate seemed like it didn't require that and had its impact directly on the bone density without the assistance of other symbiotic uh, micro microbes. All right, so moving forward, the researchers will explore the role of the microbiota in bone diseases other than osteoporosis. They also plan to determine whether butyrate supplementation can prevent and treat osteoporosis and whether probiotics can improve skeletal health in various disease states. In the future, the use of probiotics or butyrate to increase the number of regulatory T cells may find wider applications, such as in transplant medicine or as a treatment for inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. That's what I mean. The research is really, really just amazing in regards to the outcome of bone density itself, but the secondary outcomes look just incredible.
incredibly promising as well. To conclude, our findings will need to be validated in human studies. If successful, this research could substantiate the use of butyrate or probiotics as a novel, safe, and inexpensive treatment for optimizing skeletal development in young people and to prevent osteoporosis in older people." End quote. So there you have something very, very basic, fairly common, uh, uh, basically probiotic, lactobacillus rhamnosus, GG, uh, and butyrate, which used to be fairly common in a lot of foods for quite some time, or a byproduct of certain foods, having such an incredible, incredibly profound effect in regard to, and quoting the researchers, distant organ systems from going from the gut to the bone density itself uh, through these certain pathways. Insanely incredible. Again, DUI citation is listed for you to follow on your own. I don't want to continue further than what I, the information presented here because it risks introducing publisher bias, which you really don't need it considering the results are just astounding on their own. How can you really uh, embellish that more than it already is? So with that in mind, I hope you find this information of use. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Catch you all later on and thank you.